I hand over to Pertu Korhonen, um, who's from the Qatar uh, Financial Center Regulatory Authority, and we'll talk about uh, creating an analytical data model for banking supervision. Over to you. Thank you, Maxi, for the introduction. And thank you for inviting me to do this event, this event as well. What I cover in this short presentation is not really rocket science, if even data science, but it's something that is absolutely crucial for both business intelligence and machine learning. As banking supervisors, we oversee banks to meet the requirements of globally standardized regulations. In short, the so-called Basel Accord seeks the banks to hold enough capital and liquidity for the risks they carry. Traditionally, in data, the emphasis was in scrutiny of regulatory financial statements at the point of time. But more recently, the desire has been to be more analytical. An effective analysis requires data to be comparable. The challenge is that as everything stems from the firms, its financial year and the activities it performs, we receive different data at different points of time. While most firms run the accounts from the 1st of January to the 31st of December, some don't and some firms are let to report less frequently than others. These kind of things can just turn every simple and trivial analysis very burdensome. In our data, different measurements are taken depending on whether the variable captures a stock or a flow. And while most of the firms and templates are monthly, for some, the reference and collection period can be a quarter. The data is often analyzed in the form of financial ratios. These can be simple fractions of end of period balances or flows during the period or financial year to date. But what if the periods and financial years are not the same? Sometimes we assess the yield of something by dividing an annualized flow item such as uh, net profit by an average uh, stock such as equity or total assets over the same period. Again, what if the accumulation is not over the same time period? And what if you wanted to do a trend analysis, in which case year-to-date analysis is not even appropriate? The good news is that our data is well structured. Underlying is an XML-based taxonomy that maps the deeply hierarchical and dimensional data into a tight specification. In XBRL, all financial positions or instruments are given a context by a set of standardized dimension members. But while these have improved the phases of data definition and collection, the hierarchies and dimensions were not fully utilized for navigation in the PI front end before. So what we, did we do with Nine then? Um, we turned all data to be on the same basis. We aligned year-to-date data to follow calendar years. We made quarterly data to look monthly. We added 12-month rolling averages and sums to enable like-for-like -like time series analysis of ratios. But we also made sure that we, the user can always check what the underlying reported numbers are. And finally, we make the right data easier to find by bringing the taxonomy dimensions and hierarchies to the BI front end. Let me show you a couple of examples of the end user experience. So here is one of our core dashboards. It's a simple dashboard of total assets. Now in this example, you can see there's actually uh, two types of institutions in play. There's those who report monthly and those who report uh, on quarterly basis. Uh, at the top, we have a, swi a switch um, that is showing estimates not showing at the moment, but I can easily swap and say, I actually want to see the estimates. And now you can see the monthly uh, data is created for the quarterly reporters as well. In the table, you can see some of the numbers now highlighted. If I hover my mouse in here, it will then tell you that um, actually, yes, there's 39% impact um, by these estimated values uh, in nine for this uh, particular value. Another example. Um, in uh, Tableau, we can have a senior supervisor or analytical supervisor, supervisor doing, uh, doing ad hoc analysis. And uh, one example is that we just pull out um, firm by firm data. In this table now, you can see there's two, uh, color, two colors in the numbers. The red ones are the reported ones, and the gray ones are estimated. And now it's very important because we still need to know which exact numbers the firms provided to us and which we created by ourselves. So it's very important that the uh, user can hover on the value and see, okay, 
this is an estimated value, and these were the actual underlying data values, reported values that uh, were used to construct it. Other example. Uh, so in this example there, um, there's a total assets again, a single balance sheet item. We have the uh, end of period balance by month uh, in red. And then we have in orange, we have the rolling 12 month average, which we have pre-created in nine so that we can very simply create these indicators. Um, in here, we then have a profitability indicator. And now the user can choose between um, a time reference. So now this one is very volatile. This is based on the monthly data. The monthly revenue items are, tend to be very volatile. Um, so it might be a little bit too busy to, to look at. Year to date, you shouldn't really look at um, on a time series like this because you have, uh, for January, you only have one month of data and, and so forth until uh, in December, you're actually using 12 months of data. But uh, using the role in 12 months, we are doing like for like comparisons over over time. And then I said about the taxonomy dimensions and uh, hierarchies, we can enable the users to easily drill down into different levels of the bank's uh, financial statements and their income, income uh, statements. And um, all this is done by this workflow. So every now and then on our NIME server, the workflow checks if there's any Data. It will then prepare the data to do everything which is saw, and then uh, pushes it forward uh, to the Tableau server. And on the Tableau server, all the dashboards then are automatically updated. Um, so that concludes um, my presentation. I'm just going to say at the end that um, developing this analytical possible in this time without NIME. What I really like uh, about NIME is that it enables uh, end users themselves or data science teams that are business experts as well to develop complex products based on desired user experience. And at the same time, the workflow, as, as was mentioned before, the workflows actually create their own documentation uh, as you go along. I'm going to finish here. Thank you very much. Yeah, too. Thank you very much for that talk. Um, Anna, over to the studio. Do you, we have any questions for Pertu? So we have two questions. There is one question I really like, and I think it's um, related to the integration with NIME and Tableau. How easy was that, and how do you um, how do you implement this introduction? I think I think they are interested in understanding the integration between them. I think it's really easy um, because now we have um, the dedicated Tableau knows in nine and um, it, it, it's um, what well, there's one single node to push uh, the data set to uh, to the Tableau server I think there's sort of um, you of course you have to think about various things like we created a user on the Tableau server that is used by nine so that everything comes through there automatically um, we created one single um, folder on the Tableau server for all of the data sources so that we keep, keep things in order. So I think the, the building blocks are there, the nodes are there in, in, in Nine. Then it's more about uh, how you govern and manage the process. Awesome, thank you. There is one extra question I think I would like to ask and is related to the end of your presentation. You mentioned that the process was organic and I think it's what do you mean with that? What exactly is organic in this case? Well, I think organic essentially it means that it's, it's created by someone who actually uses the data as a side product of that uh, use. And uh, it has the natural element of trial and error in it. And the natural element of adapting uh, to uh, changing your requirements when you learn more about your requirements. and. Uh, in my earlier parts of career, I have been part in um, big projects to deliver analytics. And uh, in the worst cases, we have just been able to actually define, after one year of working, we have been able to define the existing system. And the process, as it is traditionally, very easily kills uh, all attempts to create anything new uh, in the documentation of user requirements, all that. Uh, it's not very fertile ground for, for development. 
Um, then a few years later, some project manager told me that yes, of course that would happen, but now we have the agile method. It's not going to happen anymore. Now things are different. But I have to say, I'm yet to see even an agile uh, project to develop analytics uh, at the same uh, as well as, as a, a, a small team of people who actually uh, know what they want and have a clear use case, clear vision of the uh, user experience in their minds. Fair enough, fair enough. Thank you so much. I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you for the great presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. And thank you very much, Petu. And um, hope to speak to you soon.